Programming can seem complicated and overwhelming when you're getting started as a trainer, so I want to give you guys three rules you can follow for better programming no matter who you're working with and no matter what their goals are. The first of these is to make sure that you guys include unilateral and bilateral exercises. And what I mean by that is make sure somewhere in your programming, whether it's every day or every week, I prefer daily, that I'm including both unilateral, which might mean like a single leg exercise like a lunge, and a bilateral exercise like a squat. And it seems very simple, but following that rule can accomplish a lot of things. Oftentimes when you guys get started, especially if you might have gone through the NASM curriculum and you're learning about corrective exercise, it's hard to know how to put it into play. But just by training a combination of or a little bit more unilateral with exercises, oftentimes that alone will clean up a lot of things. Think about it for a second. What you get inside of a lunge that you might not get with a squat are things like balance, stability. If you have a little bit of an imbalance where one leg is stronger or weaker than the other, you as a coach are gonna be able to focus on and work on those things. So for me, when it comes to great programming, having very simple rules to follow that accomplish a lot is a really effective way to know you're doing a great job. And that's a very easy one. Do a little bit more single arm, single leg stuff. Same thing goes if you're thinking about, let's say a two arm cable row. Great exercise for hypertrophy, strength, whatever the phase might be, but you're gonna get some different things than if you do a single arm standing cable row, right? Where not only I might be working on my weaker arm and it doesn't allow for me to overwork and compensate with my strong one, but I'm also getting things like shoulder and core stability. Oftentimes you'll find that with our unilateral moves, there's a lot more baked into the exercise. They might not be as great for just overall strength, but let's be honest, if you're watching this video, that's probably not most of your client's goals. And the only other thing that I'll say on this first one, including both unilateral and bilateral exercises in your training, is, pro tip, prioritize the unilateral. This is a little bit different than what I learned when I first started training, or what you might be doing, where most people will go for their bigger bilateral lifts first. Let's say like a back squat, or like a bench press which again, based on where you are in your training, might make the most sense for you. But for a lot of clients, the unilateral stuff, it's a lot more challenging. It takes a little bit more skill, there's more balance, there's more stability. So if you wanna get the most out of it, do those exercises first. And the funny thing is, over time, as people get better and stronger, you'll find there's actually a really big carryover. One of my favorite things to do before I go heavy with like a hex bar deadlift is actually to do some pretty heavy split squats, right? Because you get fired up with all those stabilizer muscles that now when I get over to that heavier lift, everything's firing better. So either way, include unilateral and bilateral exercises and I promise you, you're already gonna be doing better than a lot of other trainers probably in the gym that you're working at. The second rule for programming or for better programming that I wanna give you guys is include at least two. You don't have to do all three, but you learned about this concept called planes of motion when you're getting certified. No matter who you got certified through, everyone teaches it. Understanding sagittal plane, frontal plane, transverse plane. And then most trainers just go back to doing whatever they were gonna do. Use some of this information, right? Get people moving in directions and building strength in those other areas that they wouldn't normally do, right? Sagittal plane, is gonna be a big primary piece of your guys' training, especially with strength training exercises, but including at least one of the others, right? Either the frontal plane or the transverse plane. And the real key here, guys, is a little bit goes a long way. Meaning that as I start with a new client, even just introducing some lateral lunges, right? Where I get them moving in the frontal plane, I don't need to do three or four exercises in the frontal plane. I don't need to do two more in the transverse. That actually might be too much, right? They might not have the strength and stability. I have actually seen clients get injured when trainers do too much of the planes of motion because they're trying to use everything that they learn, but include a little bit. It will go a long way towards building stability and building what I would even call integrity, training integrity so that as they keep getting stronger and they train longer, they're building stability and strength in these other areas that a lot of people don't normally train, right? Not only if they have athletic endeavors, they play pickleball, they're out doing things, they're with their kids, they're gonna feel great because they're using those muscles and that's how we're designed to move, but it's also gonna help prevent too much 
on the same thing, too much just sagittal, or we might get injured over time from life or from training. So either way, I know if you're watching this video, you wanna do better for your clients, and one of those things would be including at least a second plane of motion. And if you do that two or three times throughout the week, you're gonna end up hitting all the planes of motion. They don't have to be in equal amounts, but definitely a huge benefit from including a little bit of frontal plane or a little bit of transverse plane along with your sagittal in just about every training session you do. And then the third rule for you guys for better programming is going to be include client preferences. And I know if you've watched some of our other videos, even the stuff that we do on passing your NASM exam or training in general, you've heard me talk about this, giving people a little bit of what they want. Let's be honest, this is a service industry. This goes a long way towards making sure your clients feel heard, right? One goal with your programming is to make sure you're creating physiological adaptations. We're trying to drive change in the body. Hopefully, if everything's going right, that's one of our goals. The other goal is to create programs that your people enjoy and they wanna keep coming back and doing because that's gonna go a long way towards them getting results as well if they stick to it. So make sure that if there's a certain client preference, let's say they, they like training with a certain tool, or they want to emphasize a certain target area of their body, right? Maybe again, I'm going to be stereotypical, guys, chest and arms. Guess what? Give them a little arm pump, especially, especially at the end of their workout. There's something called the peak end rule. And this is something that's talked a lot about in the science of experiences, places like Disney, right? The gym to me is like Disney, but the peak end rule is that somewhere in an experience, our brain is not designed to keep all the information that we have. It doesn't have space for all of it. So it deletes all the unnecessary stuff. And usually in an experience, what we remember is the peak, some sort of high, something novel or special or fun. And then what we did at the end, everything else just kind of gets deleted. And it's very much the same with workouts. People will remember their finishers because it's what they did at the end. And they'll remember anything that was throughout that was maybe a little different or they really liked or they felt accomplished by. And so think about that when you're thinking about these client preferences, where can I take advantage of this peak end rule and make sure that I'm not only delivering on smart training, but I'm doing it in a way that my clients are walking away feeling great about what they did and they feel like they're working towards their goals. So three simple things, guys. I know there's a lot more when it comes to programming. We have quite a few other videos. You can see the links in the description for more there as well. But these three will take you a long way to making sure that you have some simplified guide rails, right? Simplified rules to follow to make sure that your programming is getting better over time and it's delivering the kind of experiences your clients want. If you're not extremely confident in the way that you're programming for clients, and this is an area you wanna learn a lot more in, this is actually a huge topic inside of our two-day accelerator that we run here in South Florida. So if you wanna come spend two days learning so much more than what we talked about in this video, all the ins and outs, the best movement progressions for every client, how to coach and cue them, as well as how to put them together for a great experience, then make sure you check out the link below to find out more information on our two-day accelerator that's coming up soon.